Ladies and gentlemen, Modern Warfare 3 has now been out for a couple days and every single year when a new Call of Duty game comes out, I like to make a video like this one to help you guys out and specifically help people who want to be better at Call of Duty. So this is going to apply specifically to the multiplayer of Modern Warfare 3 and everything that we are going to talk about in this video are things that you can do better in game immediately that are going to make you better at the game. The overall goal of this video is to make you win more games, raise your kill death ratio, all in all make you enjoy the game more and all in all play better. Now, some of these things include things like settings and controller setup, things that you can literally hit a button and improve your gameplay almost immediately. Other things are things you use in your classes, attachments, perks, things along those lines that when you use them, you'll immediately do better. And the final thing are just some tips and ways you can play the game that are immediately going to make you do better, get more kill streaks, and have a higher kill death ratio. So a lot to talk about here. So without further ado, let's start out with the first one, which is a couple of settings you probably want to change to do better. So looking at settings, the first thing I'm going to show you is just a couple of little inputs. And when you change them, it's going to make you better. So the first thing is your sensitivity. So I play on a low sensitivity. I play on 6.6. Six. I played on 5.5 five in Modern Warfare 2. The reason why I upped it just a little bit is the movement is a little bit faster in Modern Warfare 3, which means your targets are going to be moving faster, which means your aim should as well. So if you took your sensitivity in Modern Warfare 2, I would just up it one and you'll immediately do better. Now, my ADS sensitivity, I have moved to 90% of what it normally is. Um, this is just my preference. You don't need this. However, having a little bit slower aim when moving down sites is going to make you a little bit more accurate, therefore easier to hit headshots. The other thing that I do is my button layout. I play on tactical. I have done this for years. I've done this since I started playing Call of Duty. What this does is put all of your movement mechanics into your thumbsticks. So your crouching and your sliding are all on your stick instead of having to press a button. I also use a scuff controller with buttons on the back of it. That helps me not take my fingers off the aim as well. What this means is I can jump and things like that and still be aiming and not have to take my thumb off the aiming button. And it's going to improve how I play and being able to snap onto target that much easier. The final setting is your field of view. I would recommend if you're playing on the base field of view, upping it. The reason why, when you play on a wider field of view, you have more in your view. You can see more. Therefore, it's less likely that someone can sneak past you around the edges of your view. And if you're playing with a higher field of view, or really any field of view, you should be have your ADS field of view on affected. This is going to make it so it's essentially easier to aim at your targets. That's a very basic way of saying it. But simply by changing those settings and those settings alone, your aim is going to get better in game. Moving into our next section, we are going to look at our loadouts. As far as loadouts go, I think there's a certain set of things you can use and pretty consistently it's going to improve how you play. First of all, what I have noticed from playing Modern Warfare 3 is it's very much an assault heavy game. So assault rifles are going to be key. I see a lot of people using the SVA 545, but using it incorrectly. The way you want to use this weapon is you want to feather the trigger. It's the very first weapon that you unlock and the very first weapon that people are going to use. So use it like a burst fire weapon because the first two bullets that come out of your weapon fire at a faster rate. So if you feather the trigger, the fire rate on this weapon is way higher, which means your time to kill is going to be way better. So just one little tip when using that weapon. However, if you're trying to pick some other weapons that will do very well, the MTZ 556 is a really good time to kill weapon. And the MCW is just really easy to use. It has very low recoil. So all of those weapons are good options to start out. The other one that isn't an assault rifle, but basically performs like one is the Bass B. You also unlock this one, I think at level 17. So you can use that very early as well. The other thing that I need you to point out, because this is different from Modern Warfare 2, is suppressors. Now, in this game, when you fire your weapon, you show up on the mini-map if you are not using a suppressor. So as you can see, the one that we are using here, the Bruin Harmonic Suppressor, this one improves my recoil control, which is nice. It makes my aim down sight speed worse, so I use this weapon at long range, it's not as big of a deal, and it makes me undetectable by radar. Now, a lot of people aren't going to want to use a suppressor because of the downside, however, the Shadow Strike Suppressor, which you can get very easily in this game, just makes you undetectable on radar. So, as we're going to talk about later, there's certain things that can make you better and make other people better, but by taking away information from the enemies, in other words, you showing up on the minimap, and we're going to talk about in a second, Ghost and other things like Covert Sneakers, take away information from enemy players. So by using a suppressor, you're not going to show up on the minimap, and it's going to make it more difficult for enemy players. Now, I have messed around with this next part quite a bit, and I have to say, I think there are two vests that are really solid options as to what to use. 
Yes, technically the increased tax sprint duration is probably the nicest perk out of all of them, but what you get in your creator class is best in, I believe, the Engineer Vest and the Demolition Vest. The Demolition Vest gives you an additional lethal grenade, but it allows all of your tactical and lethals to recharge every 25 seconds. Now, I have been using stims because I find the rate that what you get health back relatively low in this game. So I've been using stims, and when you use the Demolition Vest, you get another one every 25 seconds, which is a little bit slow, but still. The other good thing about this one is you get to use all of your perks, a gloves, a boots, and a gear. Now, the Engineer Vest, the nice thing about this one, you don't get any lethal grenades, which is fine. You get two stims, which is good, and you get an additional piece of gear. So let's go and look at our perks next. Now, as far as your perks, a lot of the gloves aren't good whatsoever, and I think the actual best gloves I don't currently have unlocked. They are the Marksman Gloves, and they're actually the thing that I'm working on getting next. As far as what they do, they reduce your idle sway and flinched while ADS. So in other words, when someone shoots at you, your aim is going to be better. That is probably the best gloves, but until you get those, Scavenger will just give you more ammo, but really Marksman's the ones you're gonna wanna be using for sure. I actually believe that there are three different boots that are very, very good. The ones that I use, and I think the ones that most people use are covert sneakers. These eliminate your footstep noises. This is a very big thing. Anyone that's using a headset, footsteps are very easy to he hear in this game. So covert sneakers are probably going to be the number one, but the other two that are both really good, I don't have unlocked yet. These are going to be for more aggressive players. Tactical pads, first of all, increase your stance transition speed and increases your slide distance. So sliding is going to be more effective. And then stalker boots, you can stray faster. So again, for more aggressive players. But overall, I think most people are going to be using the covert sneakers. Now, as far as gear goes, the two that I like to use if I'm running engineer are ghost and bone conductor, which allows you to hear enemy footsteps better. Um, but you don't need bone conductor whatsoever. Ghost is pretty necessary because almost everyone's running UAVs right now. Now, keep in mind, both ghost and covert sneakers are unlocked through your armory unlocks, which means you need to complete daily challenges and win games. And then you can unlock these. And in fact, both of these were the first two things that I've unlocked using the armory unlocks and i recommend you guys do the same it's going to make you better almost immediately so as far as just a summary for the loadouts and things that we talked about there if you haven't unlocked some of these things i have a video linked down in the description that is the fastest way to get armory unlocks and to get everything that we talked about for your creative class you're going to need to do that so check out that video it really will help you out get those items faster but when it comes to making your loadouts yes you can use the recommendations that i said but no one thing when it comes to perks and things like that pieces of gear there's two different things that it does one type of perk is going to make your character in game better in other words this is something like light weight which allows you to run faster it makes your character in game better the other thing is going to make you as a player better these are informational perks things that give you more information so something like from previous games like high alert that lets you know when someone's looking at you makes you better as a player generally speaking those are better the more information you have the better you can play you can have the best soldier in the world but if the person putting in the inputs to the controller doesn't have enough information or more information they are going to perform worse. So just know that going into your loadout creation. Now, the final three tips are going to have to do with how you play the game. Their map navigation, the way time to kill works in this game, and the way and areas that you can go on maps. So the first thing, map navigation. This is something that I've talked about before, but was more difficult to do in Modern Warfare 2, and that is sticking to the outskirts of maps. Now, the reason why this works is when you're on the outskirts of maps, there's 180 degrees where someone can't be looking at you from, which means that's 180 degrees where you can't get killed. You can focus your attention on pretty much everything else very easily and have less of a chance of getting killed. Yes, you may get less kills than running into the middle of the map, but you're also going to die a lot less and you can look from the right areas of the map into the middle of the map and that's where you're going to get the majority of your kills. It's something very simple that you can do immediately that is going to raise your awareness and raise the amount of kills that you get compared to your deaths. The second thing is time to kill. Time to kill is very, very different in this game than it was in Modern Warfare 2. Needless to say, it is longer, which means headshots are very, very important. The longer a time to kill is in a game, the more your headshots are going to matter. And it just so happens with the higher time to kill in Modern Warfare 3, you want to get headshots. So all of those tips I gave you at the beginning to improve your aim, they are going to apply so much more in this game than other Call of Duty games with faster time to kills. The final thing is how 
maps are made within Modern Warfare 3. These are all Modern Warfare 2 maps, which means they use a map strategy that is different than we have had in the past few games. One thing that you may have noticed from the Modern Warfare 2 maps is going on the outskirts of maps was not really possible. And the reason for that is because they had these really big spawn zones at the back where if you're sitting back there, you're just not going to see anyone. And then the middle of the maps were very skinny and there wasn't really a outskirt section to the middle of the maps. These maps in Modern Warfare 3 are not like that. You can very easily work your way around the outside while still being able to look into the middle. The other thing that they do in old school Call of Duty maps is make things called power positions. Now, these are going to be different on every single map that you're in. But generally speaking, these areas are elevated. They have some sort of head glitch that you can sit behind. And generally speaking, they look over the middle of the map. In other words, when looking out of them, it's going to be a high traffic zone where a lot of players go, yet you are still in a head glitch, you are elevated, and going to have an advantage on anyone you get into a gunfight with because of that position you are in. In almost every single Call of Duty map, before Call of Duty introduced advanced movement, so that was back in Advanced Warfare, all of the maps were designed with power positions, which means... Every single map in Modern Warfare 3 also has these. Now, I'm not going to go through and give you them on all of the maps because that would take forever, but just look for those areas that are elevated, have head glitches, and look towards those high traffic zones. If you stick to those zones and stick to the outskirts of the map, you're going to see your kill death rays in no time. So those are the easiest perks. I know that some of these are very, very basic, but this is meant to help out those players who are newer to the game, want to do better, and hopefully I was able to do that with this video. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, it's always appreciated if you hit that like button subscribe to stay up to date on everything call of duty let me know what you think down in the comments or other tips that you may have for the future and as always thank you so much for watching and until next time peace we are, we are